Hey class, today we are going to start talking about the powerful experimental method and the steps we use to design an experiment in psychology class. So what we're going to do for our objectives for this video is you want to be able to describe how we develop research ideas. Uh, remember to focus on the, the key terms for this unit. Um, you want to be able to distinguish between the basic types of experiments and you want to be able to define and describe independent and dependent variables and explain what is meant by operational definitions and why we need to use them. So first, our, our, our first step in designing an experiment is really finding a research problem or question. And ways we can do this um, is to kind of look at folk psychology for unanswered questions. And, and folk psychology really refers to um, the, the common sense ideas out there in the general public about psychology. So when somebody says, well, they say that if you stay all up all night to study, then you'll bomb your test the next day. Um, that's kind of folk psychology. So... Um, you know, you can conduct a study to compare test scores of students who stayed up all night studying versus the scores of students who got a full night's sleep prior to the exam. That would be a good source of research. Uh, another thing you can do is review psychology literature. Um, a lot of the published studies uh, are great sources for unanswered research questions, looking in the discussion sections of experiments. And researchers often literally talk about um, some unanswered questions that could um, be done for research in their um, experiments. My master's thesis question about gender differences in moral reasoning of high school students, uh, I kind of got that idea from some research that I was actually reading. You can just think about everyday problems that you observe on a daily basis and you have wonders about. There, there's a lot of practical applications for this research. Um, you can consider how um, research can lead to potential solutions for things, like why are people so moody, or why aren't people nicer, or why do people act mean, or why don't people study harder. Um, you could talk about memorization strategies. You could do a lot of things just thinking about what you come across every day. So that's one way to develop research problems um, or come up with questions to research. Next, you have to you have a question. You have to design your experiment. And there's really three types of general experiments that we'll talk about. One's called a pre-experimental design. This is a type of an experiment that doesn't include a control group. This, this type of study usually uses a single group of participants, and there's no comparison group between the participants you're studying um, and some normal group that didn't get a special treatment. This is often happens in like pre-test, post-test studies where a group is tested, like a group of AP psych students is tested um, on their ability to write an FRQ and then they're given special instruction on how to improve your FRQ writing and then they're retested to see if they've improved. So that's a pre-experimental design. A quasi-experimental design is a type of experiment that does include a control comparison group, but uh, neither of the groups that are studied are randomized, which means um, the groups aren't evened out to um, kind of control variables that could impact the outcome. So it's run like an experiment, but it's not randomized. Third type of experiment is considered a true experimental design. This includes both the elements that the pre-experimental design and the quasi-experimental design lacks. Um, there is control groups and they do um, put an emphasis on random assignment, a random sampling and random assignment to the compare groups. So you're going to have to know those terms for the AP test. Um, they do pop up on occasion. So we've got a research question. We kind of decided how we're going to design our experiment. Now we have to determine our variables. Now this is a very important term to know for the AP test and my test, so make sure if you have to stop or take down some notes or jot down some questions here, you do, okay? 
A variable is any event, any characteristic, any condition, any behavior, any emotion that can change. It changes according to different factors. Some variables change really easily, like somebody's mood or, or somebody's, uh, let's say, a stock market value. Other variables are pretty difficult. They're pretty constant to change. Um, those might be somebody's name is difficult to change. Somebody's temperament is different to change, difficult to change. Somebody's gender is difficult to change. Um, researchers are often seeking to measure some of these variables. Um, and remember, the, the variable can be a number, a name, or anything whose value can change. Now, there are a couple major types of variables that we're going to be looking at, and those two are the independent, independent variable. It's very important. This is uh, two terms that are often misconstrued and screwed up when people are writing FRQs. So you really want to be able to nail the differences between these two and be able to explain them and be able to apply them in an experiment. So an independent variable, this is the impact variable. This is the factor that we think is going to make an effect on something. It's going to change something else. We're going to measure its effect on something. Okay. Um, we think this is going to have an effect on something, like um, study techniques will have an effect on test scores. The independent variable there would be study techniques. An example might be, suppose we think that eating a nutritious breakfast enhances student performance. So we're not talking about that kind of breakfast, although it looks pretty good. Um, we're talking about this kind of breakfast, a nutritious breakfast. We think that the impact is going to change student performance. So the IV, the independent variable in this question, this research question, is the type of breakfast. Now, we can control the independent variable. We can control whether subjects get the uh, nutritious breakfast or not. And then we can see its effect on... Um, the test scores. Okay, remember we control the IV. We can change it. Basically, in an experiment, we control the IV to see its effect on some other variable. In this case, maybe test scores. The dependent variable. This is. We'll just talk about the DV here. Um, the dependent variable is our measurement tool. Um, this is what we measure. So the experimenter is going to measure this thing to see if it changed because of the independent variable. Um, so the DV is the outcome variable. It has to be countable here, folks. It's got to be something that we can measure specifically. Time, um, reaction time, the amount of something, how often something happens. Um, GPA is an example of something we can measure. We can measure heart rate. We can measure perspiration rate. We can measure scores on tests. An example of a DV in our previous example might be GPA in school. We can observe and measure this and see if it changes because of the independent variable. So we're saying that um, a type of breakfast someone eats has an impact on their GPA. So if they eat a nutritious breakfast, maybe they're going to get better grades. Uh, and it's very important that we operationalize our variable here. This is a very important term to know. Think proceduralize. Operationalize is kind of proceduralizing our method of study and how we're going to put our experiment together. So uh, an operational definition describes exactly what the variables are, how they're being measured in our study. For example, if we are doing our study on... Uh, breakfast, um, we would have to operationally define or clearly describe what we mean by nutritious breakfast and what we mean by GPA, how we're going to measure that. So I always considered operational definition is proceduralizing. So we're going from description of a study to a procedure so it can be followed exactly. For example, if, if we want to make yeah, I, I, I sure could go for some uh, Nestle Tall House chocolate chip cookies. Well, we don't just make those willy-nilly. We don't just throw things together. I mean, you're going to have to go find 
a Nestle Tallhouse chocolate chip cookie bag, and you're going to have to find the recipe on the back of that. The recipe operationalizes everything we do in that procedure so we can get the same yummy, nutritious, well, maybe not nutritious, but the, the same yummy cookie every single time. So operationalizing is kind of like putting our experiment into a recipe format so we can make um, our experiment replicable or repeatable for other researchers, okay? So remember, our purpose is to control variables in a study, and control basically means that um, we are understanding what we're measuring, um, we can control for it by holding other variables constant between groups that we're measuring, and um, it allows us to be very specific and precise. So um, very important here that our description becomes procedure. Um, it allows for replication. That's a very important word. I probably should have highlighted that as well. So other people can do the same study with the same procedure with different subjects to see if the results are the same. So there you have the first part of our experiment. Um, designing, coming up with research questions, what type of experiment we're going to use, the independent defense dependent variables, operationalizing, and what control means. Um, so be ready to um, use those terms in some problems tomorrow in class. Thanks.